You guys are currently filming season three. Yes. What can fans expect from the rest? Uh, season three is more complicated than the first two seasons. We're, uh, you know, now that the threat of Rabbit is gone and, and uh, Lucas and Carrie have gone their separate ways, they're dealing with the fallout of the decisions they've made. Um, there's an interesting trajectory. Uh, Chayton, uh, who we teased at the end of season two, is coming back and he's going to unleash a whole new kind of hell on the streets of Banshee. And with him coming back, you have Lucas and Proctor on separate paths, both trying to figure out if uh, they still have to be the men they are, if they can evolve into something else. And of course, the sad answer is on our show, you're going to have to be who you are. And uh, a lot of people are going to die while they figure that out. So uh, it's going to be a, a very, um, I think, uh, the stakes are a little higher emotionally for our characters. And it's, it's a little more of a complicated season. And at the same time, we've really up the ante on our action set pieces and, and on our, uh, you know, on just on, on the villains that come in to replace Rabbit. There, there's a lot of, of fun surprises coming. Along those action lines, was, it, was there any scene that you were just thrilled to see come to life? It's different when you're writing it and then it comes to the yeah. screen. Was there a scene that you totally fanboyed over? Yeah, I was really thrilled with the way our finale worked out in the church at the end of season two because even as I was writing that, I was thinking to myself, how the hell are we going to produce this? How the hell can we shoot this in a church? We're going to have to build a church. And, you know, we actually found a great church in Harlem in New York that, that let us shoot it. And uh, just everything that I wrote for that sequence, you know, the stunt guys and our director, Greg Yatanis, really figured out a way to do it. And, and it's one of those rare experiences, even, even as a writer who, you know, who gets his scripts made on TV, where you actually see something happen and it's almost exactly the way you pictured it when you wrote it. Um, so that was a really exciting uh, sequence for me to watch film. But what's been the most difficult challenge while you're writing and creating this show over the past two seasons or in the coming season? Well, it's always a challenge for us to write shootable shows. You know, we have a kind of outrageous premise and we really do balls to the walls action sequences. And so you write stuff and we write episodes that are sometimes bigger than our budget. And then we go through the process of figuring out, you know, we're always going to stay true to our story. So here's the story. Now, how do we tell this story? with the money allotted us. And, and that's probably the most challenging thing is because we're trying to write a really jam-packed, character-driven action movie every week. And when you do that, you tend to write something that costs a bit more than what, you know, Cinemax would like to pay for an episode. So then we have to figure out how to do it, you know, at a very healthy budget, just, you know, obviously when you write, you don't have any budget in mind. Is there a particular scene that you're thinking of? No, just every episode, you know, as we go through a season, you know, the things that, it always surprises me what is expensive and what isn't. Like, you know, the lesson I learned in the first season was, I would say, well, I'm not going to put an explosion there. Well, it turns out explosions aren't that expensive. But two people talking in a moving car, that can take half a day. And time is yeah. money. And all those lessons you learn as a producer of a show, like what costs money and what doesn't. And, you know, that, that's a, I'm constantly learning that lesson. We are at Comic Con. Yes. Have you experienced the con before? Yeah, we were here last year. But when we were here last year, we were kind of like the new kids on the block. We had just aired our first season. Not too many people were aware of us yet, and it was a great place for us to introduce this show. And we, we got a great reception. But what's different this year is when we walk out of our hotel now, there are people waiting for the actors with pictures of them for autographs. And everywhere we walk outside, there's people approaching Anthony and Ivana by name. And, it's just really rewarding to see that we've hit that level of awareness because if they don't know you at Comic-Con, you're, you're <laughs> fucked. You know? like, that's it. You know? Well, is there anything you particularly nerd about? Um, I really love The Walking Dead. I'm, it's always exciting to see that. And uh, I'm like the only guy who's... I, I keep meaning to watch Game of Thrones and I just haven't managed it yet because one of the sad ironies about producing television is you don't have a lot of time to watch television. But, you know, I know I would love Game of Thrones from the first few episodes I've watched, but I just watch everyone here go crazy anytime any of those Game of Thrones people are hanging out. And there's some of them were hanging out in a hotel last night and people were just freaking out. Yeah. <laughs>